Back in July 2025, in a rare interview, Gabe Newell, the founder of Valve, mentioned he was working on something big. He said, In one of the companies, we're working on an aerosol pathogen detection device so you can see all the pathogens that are in the air. At the time, it sounded like a rich man's sci-fi dream. Now, we know it's a massive real-world mission. Fast forward to October 2025, Inkfish, the research group that Newell funds, was involved in a new shocking report. They used a deep sequencing technique on wastewater samples and didn't just find typical germs. They found highly pathogenic H5N1 avian flu RNA. This is the virus responsible for the widespread U.S. cattle outbreaks. They also found Tobamovirus, a bizarre plant pathogen, at high levels. This proves that viruses are circulating in our communities in ways we have never been able to track before. But with Gaben's funding from Steam Money, this is all changing. So this isn't just your regular science project. Newell is using his $9.5 billion fortune to solve impossible problems. From the deepest parts of the ocean to the invisible threats in our air, he's building an empire of exploration. As he shared at the Monaco Yacht Show, just about everything I've been involved in over the years has moved some aspect of technology forward in a way that benefits customers. Today, we break down the three massive parts of this operation, the ships, the search, and the science to show how the man who built Steam is now trying to protect the planet. In August 2025, Newell shocked the yacht world by buying Oceanco, the elite Dutch builder that made vessels like Jeff Bezos' Koru. This is the same company making Gaben's $400 million yacht, the Oceanco Y722, now known as Leviathan, which they recently unveiled. This was an investment in operational autonomy. The official statement of the purchase described him as a hands-on visionary who respects the sea. So by owning the shipyard, Gaben gains the ability to custom engineer, maintain, and rapidly innovate his fleet of research vessels without relying on external schedules or competing interests. This gives him total control over the sophisticated, often one-of-a-kind tools his scientists need to explore. This purchase directly supports his fleet. Inkfish already owns the Bakunawa, a submersible certified to reach the deepest point of the ocean, the Challenger Deep. Think about that, the sub is built with a 9 centimeter thick titanium sphere to withstand pressures equivalent to placing 50 jumbo jets on its roof. It is a technological marvel that proves Inkfish's commitment to extreme data collection. They use the best tools possible. But the future of Inkfish is the RV-6000, a 100 meter, 200 million euro research vessel ordered from the Vard shipyard. The name RV-6000 is its promise. The ability to deploy massive underwater robots, ROVs, to depths of 6,000 meters. This is deep enough to study virtually 98% of the ocean floor, including the Titanic wreck. The ship is being designed to be a self-sufficient floating lab, supporting up to 70 scientists and crew for up to 30 days at sea. Think of it as a floating NASA lab, but for the 71% of Earth that we have barely mapped. This is adding on to his already large army of vessels built for data, owning over $1 billion worth of ships and submersibles. And the purpose of this fleet is the search. Part of Inkfish's mission involves marine archaeology. Their 2025 Solomon Islands expedition Edition surveyed World War II shipwrecks, including the destroyer USS Aaron Ward. They used advanced technology to create detailed 3D maps with centimeter resolution. This data helps experts determine the pollutional risk from the thousands of gallons of heavy fuel oil still trapped inside these deteriorating wrecks. But the real excitement is the life. Throughout Inkfish's expeditions, like the one to the Tonga Trench, they filmed the rarely seen Big Fin Squid whose arms wave like an alien. Their research is focused on new species and mapping the black boxes of ocean biodiversity. This is critical because 90% of the life in the deep ocean is still unknown to science. So Inkfish is trying to solve this by finding all of this unknown life, which we have covered in our previous video on Inkfish if you are interested. By them sharing all this data openly, Inkfish isn't hoarding any secrets. They are rapidly advancing humanity's knowledge of 
the planet. This work is all part of their commitment to open science. All data is shared globally, ensuring that one billionaire's vision directly benefits researchers worldwide. Whether it's mapping the 11,000 meter abyss or sequencing a microscopic threat, Inkfish is focused on getting the most complete information possible. And this brings us back to the wastewater study and the fulfillment of Gabe Newell's original quote. The study's method is the true game changer. It involved 78 consecutive weeks of sampling, a year and a half of continuous monitoring from a single city in Columbia, Missouri. This wasn't just your average university study. Gaben's money made it happen. They processed a massive 85.8 billion genetic fragments, averaging 1.1 billion reads per sample. To put that number into perspective, most standard environmental tests only look for 10 or 20 specific targets. Inkfish's method called unbiased ultra deep sequencing casts a net wide enough to catch every single DNA and RNA fragment in the sample, known or unknown. The team showed that their raw genetic counts for SARS-CoV-2 strongly match the results from gold standard public health tests, proving their wide net system was completely accurate. Now for the discoveries traditional testing misses. The study showed that influenza A was peaking in the winter, which is expected, but the method also flagged a massive surge in influenza C virus during the winter of 2023 to 2024. Influenza C is often milder than the flu types A or B, so it is rarely included in clinical testing panels. But because Inkfish's method sequences everything, it caught this large overlooked outbreak. This is the critical advantage of untargeted sequencing as it removes the human bias that limits what we look for. But this wasn't it, they found a lot more. The most urgent discovery of course was the H5N1 avian flu. This highly pathogenic virus was detected consistently for two months, March to May 2024. This detection aligns almost perfectly with the USDA reporting of the H5N1 cattle outbreaks in nearby states. And here's the scary part. This study caught H5N1 in Missouri sewage weeks before the first local cattle case was reported. The study authors concluded the H5N1 signal likely came from milk processing imports or farm runoff, not necessarily human cases. This is exactly what makes the system an early warning sensor. The wastewater captured a trans state whisper of an animal outbreak that could eventually jump to humans before it was even officially reported. Even more bizarre, the plant virus Tobamovirus was present at higher levels than all human viruses combined in the samples. Tobamovirus is typically responsible for the tomato brown rugose fruit virus, a devastating illness for tomato and pepper crops. The reason that this matters is that this type of sequencing can now be used as a sentinel for food supply threats and the movement of pathogens between the plant, animal, and human kingdoms, a concept known as One Health. And despite the incredible complexity, the authors estimate that this ultra-deep sequencing method can be scaled down to a cost of $500 to $1,000 per sample. To put that into perspective, most standard public health tests, the ones that miss everything but the current crisis, cost less than $250. So Gabe Newell is investing up to 10 times the cost per sample, not just to track the current pandemic, but to find the next one. So as Gabe Newell said earlier this year, we're building a device to see pathogens in the air. This wastewater study that was funded directly by Inkfish is their early lab rat for the tech they want to make. So Gaben didn't build his air sampling device yet, but with this sewage win in the bag, jumping from poop water to floating germs feels like it's only a matter of time. Gabe Newell saw an invisible threat, pathogens in the air and water, and is building a future to find them. But what truly connects building steam to finding H5N1? And is the philosophy born at Valve? empowers smart people to solve hard, data-driven problems with total creative freedom. Whether it's fixing the chaos of a billion user game platform or tackling the chaos of a billion viral fragments, the answer is the same. Collect the most data, share it openly, and let the best minds build a solution. So from buying a shipyard for global research to validating a system that can see the next pandemic, his projects are linked by the belief that more data shared openly leads to a better global resilience. As he said, I get up, I work, I go scuba diving, then work some more. For us, we're just watching a true legacy being built, a global data defense system funded by Steam money. And this is really only the 
start. If you want to learn more about Inkfish and their discoveries, check out my other video on them.